Welcome back to the EMBN show. Steve, you're IRL. I am fully charged. And I hear that you've got charging news on this week's show, right? Yeah, well, I, do we think batteries are exciting? Possibly not, but actually think this developing, development in batteries could be exciting for the type of bikes we ride in the future. And this is semi-solid-state batteries that could be coming to e-bikes actually very soon this year, by the sounds of it. Uh, Steve, this news came from the Bike Europe website. It's very interesting, I think. So, so semi-solid-state batteries are lightweight, fast charging, and offer enhanced safety, giving the potential to be a game-changer for the e-bike industry. Do you know much about the lithium-ion batteries we use these days? Uh, the chemical composition, I'm, I'm more of a sort of lead-acid person from my first Ford Escort. But, uh, I mean, what I do, what I like about this, Don, is the fact that it offers higher energy density. Exactly. Which, which leads to lighter bikes for the same amount of fuel. Mm -hmm. Faster charging times, we're always, we're always looking for faster charging times. Longer lifespan, I mean, I think they're talking about 1,500 charge cycles on this. We're gonna come on to a separate charging feature after we've talked about these, these batteries. And I think what most of the audience will be concerned about is safety. And these uh, solid, semi-solid semi state batteries do offer improved safety, which I think is good news for everybody. Because I think you had a, heard of a, of a fire story this week, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I need to catch up with my friend. But there's, yeah, yeah it sounds like an e bike battery. It did start smouldering. Uh, so yeah, I need to find out about that. But they don't have the liquid electrolytes like the lithium ion batteries. And there's a Chinese manufacturer called T and D, which is a subsidiary of Bafang, uh, and they're making these solid state e-bot batteries. 830 watt hours and it weighs 3.2 kilograms and small scale production is expected to start this year. Yeah, I mean, we were out in Bafang last year and we didn't actually go to the plant, but we did feature it in the video. I mean, those guys are all over this technology. Uh, it's quite interesting, there's also um, some brands out in Europe who are developing stuff like this as well. I think news coming on that in the future. Mm. But uh, weight-wise, we haven't talked about weight. So that's 830 watt hours and yeah. it's 3.2 kilograms. So I guess like a, an Avinox battery 800 watt hours is 3.74, 3 a 800 watt hour Bosch is what is it, 3.8, 3.9? 3.9 I believe, yeah. 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 So definitely a, a, a pretty nice weight saving, but also the way they package these things is different as well. It's like a almost like I said this last week, like a sort of chocolate, you know, the big chocolate bars. It's kind of that. I sort do of know shape. the big chocolate like an bars. envelope almost. <laughs> and it could change the way that manufacturers are designing their down tubes for these things. I think it's interesting though, because what we saw at Eurobike a couple of weeks ago is the fact that the Rotefield bike had a custom made BMZ battery, which was quite an odd shape. But what yeah. it did, it allowed them to make quite a slimline down tube with a, with, with a larger capacity, 860 watt our battery in there. So I think, I think, you know, we've been focusing on motors and power and torque for the last few years. I think it's probably time that the focus on technology does shift towards batteries. Well, let's imagine we get and all of it. We get a thousand watts, we get a hundred newton meters, and we get an 18 and a half kilogram bike. One thing we haven't talked about is the potential cost of these batteries, because obviously yeah. these guys are going to be interested in that. Uh, you know, you're looking at an 800 watt hour battery these days, which is around about 900 pounds. Quite expensive still, yeah. It is. So, you know, some people do like to have a spare battery. However, well, the video coming this weekend, viewers, is, I think I promised this last week in the show, but it's been delayed, is this video I've done called Off-Grid Unlimited Riding, question mark. And I've got one of these power stations that you see everywhere, I see them everywhere, all over What my brand way. is that? So this is by Atom ESS, but yeah. there's all sorts, there's Anchor, Jackery, yeah. uh, DJI do one as well. And they're kind of like outdoors living, camping, you can plug anything into it. And this one that I've got is 2,200 watt hours. Yeah, and I had a solar panel as well, and that. It, it I set. guess you could be careful not to give the sh the pro the, the video away. Right? Yes, true, but. <laughs> Initially, I thought that it's quite expensive. These things are about a thousand pounds. But actually, if you compare that to an e-bike battery, and this is what is it? It's two and a bit, two and three quarters actually. Yeah, for twelve hundred quid. That that seems like a bargain. right? Yeah, and it's universal. You can use it for your camping as well, obviously. So, yeah. um, um, so how much? 
Give us an insight into into what you could charge with something like that. Well, could I you a day, two days? Oh, I believe you could just keep going. How? Because I've got a solar panel <laughs> and uh, <laughs> two hundred watts. You could okay. get you could up to eight hundred watts for solar panels. I only had two hundred, and it was right. recharging. You know, not as fast as I was using it, but. Obviously, you're charging it in the middle of the day when you're riding. So, it was so you only... actually saw some sunlight where you went to? It was beautiful sunshine where I was. In, in Wales? In Wales, yeah. Uh, but Don, I think I think this um, semi-solid state battery, we will see more of in the in, I'd like in to see future. a big manufacturer picking this up. Like, it, it does like... say. It does say. Well, it says... There is somebody in the mix. Yeah, it come in this month, I believe. Yeah. So folks, keep your eyes peeled uh, on some new solid state batteries coming from the Far East. They're definitely all over it. Uh, what else have we got this week in the news? More news. Well, SRAM have acquired O-Chain, the active spider manufacturer. So if you've seen these things, these basically mount to your, your bottom bracket or your motor, and then your chain ring mounts to that. And it's got elastomers inside it, and it lets your chain rotate backwards so that it gives like a freer feel to your rear suspension and takes out a lot of those bumps from your feet as well. Really popular on the downhill racing circuit. You see, I quite like a bit of feedback through my feet. Although it's really interesting that, you know, uh, Thibaut de Prella came third in Val de Sol with no chain. And we've yeah. seen some of the best downhill runs ever have been without have been chainless. That's you know, true. De Prella, Aaron Gwynley gang 2014. Uh, Nico Mullally, yes, uh, Cafial as well. He came a top three, I think, without yeah, a chain. Right, yeah. um, interesting, interesting. Uh, calms down the pedal, kickback, smoothing out the ride and the feedbacks with the pedals. Freeing up suspension movement. Uh, and very, inter very interesting, should I say, to see a big manufacturer like SRAM take on board this company and hopefully we'll see this develop and be used in some of their more mainstream components as well. Okay, cool places done. Uh, first up, uh, Uno Myth here. Yeah? Uh, the hold on, Uno Myth of the Bosch the XM50 wires. Yes, of they, course. They do the original one. We got one. carried away with the Uno. <laughs> yeah, haven't you? So this, this is David Lewis. I think David has been in the well in the bike vault before, but I thought this was such a cool photo. I had to stick it in here. This is how to say that Blau Quippen. Blau Quippen, Cape Town. Amazing looking, isn't it? Uh, nice bit of. Uh, Spring flowerage here. Uh, springtime in Valamel Val Malenko, Italy. This is Brian Ferrari. It's a good name, isn't it, Brian? If you're going to have a name. Brian, Brian Ferrari, Ferrari yeah. <laughs> That's quite good. And then we have got a Deng Fu with Friston Forest behind. I thought it was interesting. This was all built for £3,040 with all brand new kit and some bargains. Some were old stock. Well, we did have a Deng Fu on our motor video a few years ago, and mm -hmm. I think that bike was £3,000 with the Bafang um, 95 Newton motor on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, got a got, yeah, yeah, M, battery. M510. Yeah. Lovely. And then Alistair is in the Swiss Alps, morning a ski with a height mm. at the top of the mountain in the background, I flew off with my speed wing. Where Small, is this? Fast where it, where is this, Alistair? Need wow. to know where this is. It's a good uh, day. Beautiful, uh, beautiful parts of the world in this week's bike vault. Thanks for sending them in. Keep them coming. Uh, feedback, Don. Um, what this this is based on a video we did a few weeks ago. Do we need more torque or do we need more peak power? I think what's important to understand is it was actually like a, a beginner video into the whole. It's just introducing people into peak power and torque. I mean, it wasn't a scientific analysis about cadence and gearing and all this kind of thing. It was just to prove that, you know. Talk is a really important aspect of an e-mounted bike uh, if you're going to be riding super technical terrain, right? We know what Mike Hunt 1528 wants. He doesn't want more talk or more power. He wants more money. All right, I don't know where you go. <laughs> don't you go with that, Mike Hunt? Uh, Energy AT. I think a big question and concern is the fact that e-bikes become technologically dated far faster than a regular analog bike. Definitely something to chew on as a consumer and environmentally re regarding forced waste planned obsolescence. No, I'm not an anti-e-bike, I'm planning on getting one soon. I think the whole business of planned obsolescence uh, can be overcooked because um, I actually rode a bike, one of my neighbor's bikes on the weekend to a party. It's a new proof for the Shimano EP801 motor. Yeah. It's still an amazing bike. Yeah. It's a really, really good bike. Oh, I mean, I and that's like 85 newton meters and you know, 560 watts peak power. 
Yeah, I mean, I do agree. And also, I think we are at risk, even in the mountain bike world, of the Emperor's New Clothes, where new bikes come out and you think, oh, that's out of date now. And it, and it isn't, but I do get it that things can look dated pretty quick. But I don't believe that planned obsolescence actually happens in the bike world, do you? I, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, the thing that, I mean, the biggest thing that might be obsolete today would probably be wheel size. That's, that's, a, and that's, Probably about as far as you can go, really. I mean, a 26-inch wheel bike is... Obsolete, Steve Jones says it. But then that bike can be used for your children, right? Yeah, true. I'm actually looking for... Hold on, didn't you actually buy a 26-inch no, sure wheel of Kona not so long ago? Uh, I did, actually. But I was <laughs> trying to buy one for my eldest boy. But actually, you, you struggle. They're all 27.5 now. Interesting. There you go. Into the bike vault. And I like the colour of Dave's Merida, it, uh, Cascade Hut Ride. This is the last month of riding before the snow season. Perfect day, cold and clear. One snake and one Brumby. What's a Brumby? Uh, and answers uh, in the comments below. Uh, that... I don't know. I don't even know where a Brumby is. Nice or super nice? It must got to be Australia if winter's coming. Super What's nice. It? It's a Brumby. Uh, Matt Honeycutt. Where are you from, Matt? Where are you from? Uh, Anyway, he says, thanks to you all at EMBN, Steve, the Don, the crew. This huh? is a track. Uh, North Carolina, Steve. North Car I can't see North Carolina. What does it say that? It says there, Salem Lake Park in I got Winston, it. Winston Salem. Salem. The Jesus Trail. Why is it called the Jesus super Trail? Super nice. James Ayres, that's super nice. Transition repeated. What a beautiful bike. Right? Ashton Court, just down the road. Beautiful. James yeah. Ayres. Uh, Dina, Santa Cruz, Bullet, taking on the Watchman Trail. Uh, in Idaho, custom decals in metallic hot pink. Hot pink? What do you reckon, Steve? Uh, didn't you used to race in hot pink? <laughs> what, what kit? Uh, let's move on. That's a super nice Dina. And uh, now we've got Mr. Punt, who's maybe a relation of Mike Hunt over there. <laughs> and, right uh, at 2025 Norco site. Don't know where Isaac is. Um, uh, yeah. I don't, have you ever ridden a Norco? I've never ridden a Norco in my life. Are you, act are you actually serious? Yeah. You've never ridden an Orca? <laughs> no. I mean, oh, it wasn't so I long ago, Norcos, in my eyes, were not that desirable. But I think they Hold are. Hold on a minute. Right. Your famous uh, colleague from the Shire, Fionn Griffiths, used to ride a Norca? She did. They, yeah, they were not very good looking downhill bikes, I've got to say. Hey, what about this? <laughs> well, this I nice think that's a great nice. looking bike. I nice think that's super, super nice. nice. Super nice. For Maiden me. voyage. It's great. Uh, Eric Merkel. This is the last one this week. Um, Canevo SL. They come in a little bit more rare, the old Knievo SLs oh, yeah, these days. That's true. You had so, a great time in yours, didn't you? I loved it. So Eric says, I'm 69, I've been riding mountain bikes since 2018. In 24, I switched to this Knievo SL. Uh, bought it used with 150 miles on it. Flipping it, it's not very used. Do you know what I love it? about this is the fact that he says, uh, when I hit 75, I might reward myself with a full power e-bike. Do it. Like your style, Eric, super nice. <laughs> A few nice pieces of social content, Don. Uh, this Labyrinth bike with the Marle M40 drive unit in there. What a stunning, stunning looking bike. Doesn't it look cool? I don't know why. It's, it almost looks like the frame is sort of flush with the motor. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't yeah. look like the most. I don't know that, but it looks uh, really cool. It's been a while since I rode a Labyrinth, actually. French brand, right? No, I have no idea. Uh, and then, of course, specialised gravity Brembo brakes have been the hot news recently. I think uh, maybe they're too good. Look, Bruni's failed to win the last few races. Failed. What was he? He's breaking too hard. Was he third? He's he still right sixth, there. He was sixth at Val de Sole. Oh, yeah, rubbish. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's really interesting because Brembo obviously is a, an automotive, yeah. sort of motorsports brand, I guess. But... Didn't they have some custom YZ450 Brembo brakes a while back? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I think these look really cool. And I like seeing these sort of bigger brands. We've seen Olin's. Yeah. There's talk of Bill Stein coming yeah. to the suspension. Well, I've not but seen you, it you're yet. You're such a gossip. I know. I want to see that. Such a gossip. Well, they've got Olin's on the Specialized. They can't use both. Uh, interesting that the Left Wheel uh, World Cup downhill race in the weekend, that some of the riders were, have, were running a smaller disc up front and a bigger disc on the back. I've always thought that should be the way. Yeah, on steep tracks. Yeah, you're hanging off the rear brake. What's coming up on the channel this weekend? Well, the Don's got his off-grid charging adventure. How far did he go? It was uh, a Steve Jones inspired adventure. <laughs> me and Leo <laughs> bog uh, snorkeled up the side of the... I love of, a good bog, bog trot. We tried to go up uh, Cadridges the wrong way. 
Came down it the right way. Yeah, yeah. But it was good fun in North Wales, actually. That's coming on Sunday. And then on, uh, just a couple of days before that, we've got tyres versus location. What is the correct tyre for the type of e-mountain biking you ride? And I'm going to try and see if the range affect, if your tyres, sorry, affect how much range you get. So how efficient one tyre is compared to the other. Nice. See you next week. Yep.